Good evening, everyone. System Chalk here for the 103rd episode of Book of Hours playing as the artist. And uh, I am sorry to say I had a little... Well, I'm not sorry to say that I had a break, but I am a little lost on where I left things just because I made some tea and then I ran into someone, so had a bit of a chat. And uh, as nice as all of those things are, um, I, I was on a bit of a roll with the episode, so I do recall that we're going to level up Transformations and Liberations. Uh, I'm... I don't know why I didn't remember it last time, but I did actually make a change uh, to this um, to this card. So uh, in between, it was actually while I was in the middle of the conversation, which... I don't think the person I was talking to watches the broadcast, so I'll feel, feel okay, but actually mid-conversation I just had a moment, I was like, oh yeah, Black Book of Brittany is glimmering, isn't it? Uh, and uh, then I felt really bad because somebody <laughs> with the other person was talking and I should have been paying attention to what they had to say. Um, but uh, And I, I was in my own way, but you, you can't always control when, when the thoughts come. Anyways, so... And if it's uh, not glimmering, well, I, or it's not bittersweet certainty, I'm going to, uh, I'll just have a sad moment later on. Uh, but I think we unpause and we, yeah, okay. Um, so one thing that I might want to think about is whether or not I try to read the history of inks now. Um, I don't think it's a terrible idea, but I probably want to get a gossip at least. Actually, you know what's even better? A confounding parable. Uh, let's do the other line. I've already mastered this, but I could reread it and perhaps recall a memory. And if it's only going to be. If it's going to take a minute, we might as well. Um, read the history of inks off the top. And then the lunar globe. Okay. And actually, uh, I will try... The, the history of inks makes me smile, so what I will try to do, maybe we'll do the normal run for the video, and at the end, perhaps what I should do is, um, I think I'll read something special. So this might be a bit of a longer episode, um, but I figured it would, I, I can share something fun, uh, which I think most people know how this works, but, oh, that's helpful for transformations and liberations. Oh, hang on. I was getting a confounding parable, thinking that it would help transformations and liberations, and it doesn't. Um, but it will still have rows, so yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll learn to live with it. <clears throat> Mrs. Gill stands ready to help. You always cheer me up, she says morosely. All right, Mrs. Kill has seen more of the world than she usually lets on. Conversations with her yield the occasional surprise. Add something to enhance Mrs. Kill's effectiveness for the day, or just talk. Unlike some assistants, Mrs. Kill can make use of fabric. I've carried the memory like a flambeau safe through the mazes of night. All right, so. Yeah, the focus, I think, is going to be on reading. So reading books first, transformations and liberation second, and then um, laying the groundwork, at least, for reading the Cucurbit Prisoner records. But that's not a major concern right now. There it is in Camino Tizer. Mrs. Kill, as every local gossip knows, came from France to marry Mr. Kill, but there's scant trace of the continent in her accent now. We 
should probably be making a bit of money too. I could offer help with correspondence and arithmetic. There's no school in Brankrug and not everyone here knows their letters. Okay, extra effort soul and ubisunt. So I can never remember which of the um, which of the memories gives the uh, or of the the chances gives what results, but the fact that we can add the extra fet means that we we win. So, the other line, one of Samuel Savage's more thoughtful works, an allegorical play about the city Clarity, a city that is also a book and the sentences which inhabit it. The Lord's proverbial and the Lord's disquisitional war in the streets of Clarity, while the punctuates get drunk on ink and supply the jokes, though by Savage's usual standards there aren't very many jokes. The final act sees the Lord's proverbial unsealing the city Clarity's gate to expel the population into the unknown. The formula that they use for the unsealing is a real one. It can be used with knock and preliminal meter to create a gate sign of power. I have a few favorite authors. I will definitely say, even from Cult of Simulator, Samuel Savage is one that I've always, I've always kind of liked uh, reading entries from. So, Humors of a Gentleman was one of the first really clear books that I can remember from the game, and uh, and being like, yeah, I, I like, I like where this is going. All right, so I'm gonna enjoy some tea. Okay. <clears throat> Increase relevant aspects by adding an element of the soul card. That brings us up to 14 rows, which was the requirement. There it is, gonna be no tizzer, Mrs. Kill. As every local gossip knows, came from France to marry Mr. Kill, but there's scant trace of the continent in her accent now. And the regret, um, let me just see where we're at with that. So one, two, three, hindsight doesn't help. Confounding parable doesn't help. Clouds do. So yeah, we just need two more memories and we can move on. <clears throat> move on with that. Alright, The History of Inks, a legendary grimoire of exotic ink-making lore. The cover and some of the pages, unfortunately, are stained and crusted with something more like mucus than ink. The Castum Maricat is refined from the liquor named Lethe in the presence of nectar aspect. The priestesses of the Knot have also learned how to build, uh, brew Maricat in this wise, yet for the nature of their arts, their task may be easier. The history concludes with the admission that the Encastum named Orpiment Exultant was once drawn from the veins of Forge Long. Thankfully, it seems, it can also be refined from Iotic Essence using the techniques in this book, or with Transformations and the Jewel Science. So that actually gives us three ways of making Orpiment Exultant. So we've got one from <clears throat> Transformations and Liberations, one from uh, whatever we get out of History of Inks. I think that might be Inks of Power. And uh, then Enbury and Lapidary, but obviously that's going to be a... Uh, that's, <laughs> I, we shouldn't expect to use that one pretty regularly. Uh, but, yeah, Inks of Power, which is good. Uh, that won't be that hard to level up. Incidentally, we can use the Confounding Parable and the Intuition already. And let's find a shelf for the Intuition. That's for patterns. There we go. So there is a history with the history of inks, which I am really looking forward to sharing with you, actually. <laughs> now, one small challenge I have with inks of power, it's a scale and rows one, and I only have one, uh, one scale um, aspect right now. Mind you, we can always restore the FET when the time comes, but let's let's not stand on ceremony. Let's get the um, the uh, Inks of Power leveled up. Actually, the hindsight's slightly better, seeing as Mrs. Kill might generate one of those. 
I am no expert, but I'm no dabbler either. Now, it's really my call when I would like to level up transformations and liberations. I could generate a bunch of memories <clears throat> to push things along. And there is a small argument to do that for the simple reason that um, Mrs. Kill may wind up giving me a regret uh, on her own. I suppose if I want, I can throw the Newman in as well. So we really only need one more memory after that. But... Um, but again, I, I have options right now in terms of the kind of the rest of the day, so I think I'll leave it aside for now. An afternoon spent profitably reading newspapers to the curious, writing affectionate letters for the lonely, steering farmers through the requirements of the Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, I do have a number of things to do right now, and then of course there's always this, there's the scare that um, Numa may show up at some point. So I think for now, my priority is going to be to lock down what I have um, and then as sort of a secondary concern, <clears throat> we'll, um, you know, we'll work on the, the next stages. Um, so that could be opening up rooms, that could be, you know, amassing what I need for the Cucurbit prisoner records. I have a few, a few options. Right now, though, I'm really just looking for a forge or a moth. Hmm. One option I do have is to consult my unique one. So this is um, Confounding Parables, Cheerful Ditties, Beguiling Melodies. Uh, I technically... Well, actually, I could throw the Earth sign in on Inks of Power, I guess. Um, salt would actually no hang on salt is knock moon and winter so that wouldn't help transformations and liberations a pattern would and pattern doesn't come from um mrs kill so let's use our shaft with that one and let's read we'll go from left to right so traveling at night volume three first i've already mastered this but i could reread it and perhaps recall a memory Solace and Storm, we've got Gossip, we can get. Savage Hymns has Scale, I think. Either way, uh, wouldn't give me... Or would it? Ugh. I'm, I know there is some music that doesn't give sky but i don't think savage him so i would guess that savage him is scale and sky fear is scale and edge contradiction is moon and edge so good for confounding parable not important for transformations and liberations intuition we've already got hindsight uh, would be good for inks of power regrets we have uh, this would be foresight which we're looking for but we can get from mrs kill Bittersweet Certainty is Lantern and Winter, Stolen Secrets, Moon and Knock, and Secret Thresholds. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, an Impulse would be good too. Okay. Yeah, I'm not I'm not quite ready to pull the trigger on um this is kill. Um or, yeah, I'm going to wait for Mrs. Kill. I'm not going to pull the trigger on generating a memory quite yet. This is good for Inks of Power, though. So one more of those, and we're good. That's actually the sort of thing I would be willing to experiment with a stolen secret for, but... Better now. So let's get uh, Whist back in play. <clears throat> it is summer and I am sitting on the bench outside the Sweet Bones, eating crumbly cheese and nettle wrappings and good black rye bread, soaking up the sun. Well, there's the stolen secret. Um, so that gets me my extra inks of power. 
They're at Kit Tiz and Camino Tizzer, Mrs. Kill, as every local gossip knows, came from France to marry Mr. Kill, but there's scant trace of the continent in her accent now. Okay. <clears throat> so, confounding parable, gossip, stolen, see- what? Moon! 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 <laughs> Not- <laughs> Not moth. Um, so why did I think this one would work? Uh, yeah, I don't know, but that was silly of me. Oh, well, I could use the earth sign. I don't need to, though. Well, I'll, I'll try to be patient. I definitely have a tendency to uh, run after the shiny objects. All right, Traveling at Night, Volume 3. The annotated dream journals of Christopher Alopoli, sometimes called the only readable occultist. Literate, entertaining, bewildering. Alopoli's disquisitions on fire and the unburnt guard... Sorry, guard... Unburnt God are interrupted by passages of distractingly erotic poetry addressed to Baldemera. To reach the stag door, I believe that all you really need is to want something enough, but I've never wanted anything that much, except of course Baldemera, and I'm very much afraid that the knot in the story is this, what Baldemera wants is the stag door. But here's something I learned in Persia, perhaps it'll teach you what you want. Okay, so there's the pattern which we can apply. So if I want, I can combine all of these into uh, new transformations and liberations and it's um a little premature but i actually th think i'm okay i think i'm okay eating these for the next level so at last i'm something of an authority in this improve the skill to level six so one thing i can do right away is uh, regenerate the newman so we can do that at Natan's desk. Oops. I've already mastered this, but I could reread it and perhaps recall a memory. And again, if I want at any point, I can level up Inks of Power. We'll do that at the end of the day if it comes down to it. But I prefer to save my elements of the soul for things that are not. Um... Oh, perfect. That got me, uh, that got me my inks of power. <clears throat> so I'm going to need six memories for, um, for transformations and liberations. I have one, two, three, four, ooh, five. I'm not brave enough to hold back on this, so rest and refreshment. Tuppence will buy me a hearty meal in a quiet place where I can rest and gather my thoughts. My skill is now level six. Its power aspects have also increased. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Ooh. It's all well and good, but okay. I'm really banking on Mrs. Kill giving me uh, giving me at least one memory that I need. <clears throat> okay. Well, no, I can use the Newman again, actually. Um. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a little dicey, but I think we can see this through. Another fruit plucked from Knowledge's tree. Hey! I like Mrs. Kill. Mrs. Kill has seen more of the world than she usually lets on. Conversations with her yield the occasional surprise. So in this case, we're going to spread the net as far as I can. Um, so again, we need Forge and Moth. So the first thing that I would want is to get the pattern because we know that Mrs. Kill can't generate one of those on her own. So I've already mastered this, but I could reread it and perhaps recall a memory. 
Again, we need six, so that's two of six. Next up, we will try... Um, actually, I think that's it for um, unique memories. Yeah, so we've got the regret. Foresight is the next one. I think I'm actually going to be coming up short. Like, Impulse is the last moth that I have that's not a name day riddle. So maybe I try to make one of those real quick. Yeah, look, I'm not feeling super confident about this, but we are committed, so... Boss goes in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we try the dispensary. I can add Edict's Liminal, which fortunately already brings 10 for the name day riddle, so I can add whatever I want here. We'll add the Solace. Conceive a Mothy Riddle. 90 seconds is a long time to wait, but it's my best shot. I will, we're going to read this a second time once I get the, uh, after I use this in a, as an input. So, the skill is now level four. Its power aspects have also increased. <clears throat> okay, gossip doesn't do much for me. I mean, at this point, I think anything Mrs. Kill can generate is going to be something we're already making. Let's see where the we'll see where the efforts go. Night has fallen, dawn will come soon. Better now. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it's all well and good. Um, this is kind of a waste though. Even if I try to Yeah, you know what? We're just gonna we're just gonna sit on it. I think when all is said and done, I'm going to be one memory short, but I am i could be wrong on that. Okay, by their marks ye shall know them. A monster hunting initiate of the hour named the Colonel, who identifies herself as Little Sophia, provides advice on finding the weak, weak spots of Long. Little Sophia observes dryly, should one desire to slay an immortal, it is most practical to do so before they become immortal entirely. She details the marks, the changes that Long undergo as they abandon their normal condition. As the lantern Long begins to abandon its flesh, its skin becomes loose, its bones soften. The sixth mark is to be observed thus, when the flesh between the finger and thumb can be pulled to the fi final finger joint. So three of six... Bancroft Diaries. Lord Frank Franklin Bancroft was initiated into the arts of the flower maker by the rose witch Fiona Arishire. Uh, he rose to become a society provider of occult services and secret pleasures before his abrupt disappearance in 1790. Bancroft seems to have been a talented adept, but devoted his energies to frustratingly whimsical projects, arranging grape-fetching matches between Mansa spirits, teaching percussigants to juggle, and conjuring storms of imaginary blossoms for the Rose Witch Ayrshire, who resolutely refused ever to couple with him. Bancroft spends 20 pages bemoaning this last. 
The mantra here recorded is a high and exacting magic which can be used to pledge one's spirit to the watchman, beginning an ascent to the house. Bancroft boasts of his ability to recite it when in his cups. He also had it set to music for a performance with fireworks at Boxall Gardens. Now I notice that we don't have the foresight out of this, so I'm guessing that's what Mrs. Kill gave me? Yep. There it is in Camino Tizer. Mrs. Kill, as every local gossip knows, came from France to bury Mr. Kill, but there's scant trace of the continent in her accent now. And finally, Traveling at Night, Volume 1, the annotated dream journals of Christopher Olapoli, sometimes called the only readable occultist. Literate, entertaining, bewildering. The wood lies outside the walls of the Mansus, as any student of the histories knows, the Mansus has no walls. Elopoli describes how he came to make repeated visits to a dream wood via what he calls silver dreams. Trying to think your way to the wood, he explains, is like thinking your way to being in love. But I did find a secret that helped. So, one, two, three, four, five. Turns out, as long as we get the name day riddle on time, we will be able to get the upgrade, but we may not necessarily be able to keep all our elements of the soul by the end of the day. We'll see how it how it goes. This is the way to the wood, but perhaps it is perhaps the wood is not a suitable place for a librarian. Named a riddle, a deceptively intricate riddle that might just teach us who we really are. Gervinius van Loren was notoriously fond of these. Okay, so we've got transformations and liberations, named a riddle, regret, the sun's weakness, pattern, foresight, impulse. Shaft, transformations and liberations. When I thought I'd actually, before we do that, let's use the metal. When I thought I'd understood, I'd only begun. 30 seconds. All right, so yeah, we did lose the metal for the day, but we did get our we did get the memory we were, uh, or we did get the upgrade we were looking for, so hard to be upset about that. So, I'm actually going to save temporarily here. We're on the 103rd episode, I think. Let me just double check that. Yeah. So we're not quite finishing up for the episode, but this is a not this is not a bad place to stop the gameplay for a bit. And um, this is, so uh, to be completely fair, um, I've had people come in and I don't know, there's just something about the assumption that, that kind of rubs me the wrong way. Um, Cause it's not like this is the hardest thing to find, but if anything else, I just sort of find that things like this are fun to discover on your own. I don't feel this is particularly well hidden. Um, I don't think it was intentionally supposed to be like, you know, super hard to find either. Um, but I figured there's not going to be any more gameplay for today. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show a little secret that is on this screen. Um, and if it's something that you'd still like to try and discover for yourself, I figure this is the chance for you to, you know, bow out. But um, this is just going to share what I'm what this is ultimately going to reveal. I believe has already been posted to the Weather Factory blog anyway, so it's not a it's not a huge thing anyway. Um, but I just wanted to get the warning warning out of the way. So for those of you that are remaining, you'll notice when you uh, open the, kind of when you get to the, the game, uh, you will sometimes hear sounds when you um, mouse over certain things. And in particular, when you go onto the title, it makes a noise. So if you click, view hidden papers. Just give me a second to put this up. All right. <clears throat> so what this does, this will open up 
Oh dear, sorry. Give me a second here. I just realized what I did. My computer's gonna need a second to load a bunch of unnecessary stuff in the background. Okay. Sorry, it's hard to it's hard to juggle all of this stuff while also recording. My um, my browsers become quite a bit less responsive, but we should be able to turn on display capture. Hopefully, there's nothing too personal on the screen. Okay, that's interesting. No, oh, there we go. get it. All right. <clears throat> uh, the Palazzo Dario, Venice, 15th of October, 1722. Madam, I regret the intemperancy of what must follow, but I write in haste and full wrath. Even now my sleeves are beset with slither slime. You permitted me to bear away from your library that noble book the, excuse me, the history of inks, for which I averred and still aver my gratitude. But, madam, you have behaved in a manner most inconsonant with, the, with professional care. Madam, to the point, I provided myself a sacred precinct to mix the fifth ink. I set certain protections about the place. I had no wish to be interrupted by robbers or rivals. One of my prominence and noble stature suffers grievously from the envy of lesser practitioners. You must know, madam, that I am at an adept of wit and skill, and that these protections were mighty in scope and extent. I warded against worm and storm, bite and sight, and eight principles and the four and the eight principles and the four hundred names. But, madam, I warded not against the pettiest and the meanest. When one takes a lease upon a palace, one expects to bring one's own guards and retainers to defend against uninvited ill-wishers, but one does not expect to deploy ratting cats and mousing terriers for defense against the rodentry. That, madam, is a given. So, madam, I had assumed that as a competent preserver of knowledge that you would place a ward salutiferous to protect against such vermin as raw prophets! Madam, I have taken the necessary time to compose myself. I will tell the rest but briefly. The raw prophet is drawn to the history of inks by what I know not. E'en as I turned to fill the calcin, it fell upon the book by the time I had turned back to the uh, sorry, and by the time I had turned back, the book was all but engulfed. I strove mightily against the raw prophet with the strength, the great strength of my arms, but raw prophets are flexile and indelicate creatures, and I won only slime and besmirchment and intimate assault at no small cost to my dignity. Therefore, madam, um, sorry. Therefore, madam, I do now insist and demand that first, you abandon all claims upon the history of inks. The book is gone. I do not wish to inquire exactly where, but I imagine within the doings of the raw prophet. Second, that you compensate me for your incompetence. A gift of the second volume of the unexpurgated De Horis, I suppose, will suffice. Thirdly, that you compensate me also for the cleansing of my garments. I attach the bill in full. Yours in honor, Hokebald of Posind. Um, so yeah, there, that secret, um, that secret section there, um, essentially gives you, oops, oh dear. Well, now I've gone and done it, haven't I? All right, well, you know what?
Oh, hang on. I think I got this working. All right. Sorry, this is a little... Uh, a little more janky than I was expecting. Um, but um, the reason why I, I chuckled when I saw the um, history of inks and I had read that entry. So when, if you go into that folder that um, opens up from that menu, um, it's called Profit and Loss. I believe it is the first one in the folder. Um, but the history of inks, a legendary grimoire of exotic ink making lore. The cover and some of the pages, unfortunately, are stained and crusted with something more like mucus than ink. So you can draw your own conclusions, but um, there is some fun stuff in there. There is actually a nice one. I won't say uh, who it's to and from, but I think a number of you will will get it when you read it. But it deals a little bit with the role of the librarian and what the Incastum Terminale are. But, um, but yeah, there's, there's definitely fun little bits in that, and I, I sort of figured that reading the history of inks would, uh, would be a good time to, um, to tell, tell a little bit of the backstory and uh, tell us a bit about Hokobald. Anyways, thank you very much for watching, and we'll be back Friday. This would be the last one uh, for the week to kind of move on from, from our current position. Uh, we've already leveled everything up, so I need to decide whether I would like to try and read the Cougarbit Prisoner records or if we should make an attempt on one of the other rooms. Um, but we'll deal with that later. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Take care.